Hello everyone, welcome to the uh, QTP training from IT Learn. This is Karthik. Uh, welcome to the first day, project one. So before any of you have questions about how come it's the first day and what is the reason behind it, let me quickly explain team. What has happened uh, is that uh, there are over 110 participants currently, over 120 in fact, in this session. 60 of you are prepaid, have joined as part of the master of software testing and are continuing through the math or mobile application testing live project. Most of you did not get a chance to really go through the prerequisites that I had mentioned. So having said that, what I wanted to do was make sure that we give this training a little bit more focus. I start with more basic fundamentals and then get towards uh, more advanced topics. So that way, even if you have not got a chance to go through a lot of content that I've been asking you to do uh, actively, you will still be able to do a lot of uh, catch up with me as I go through the session. All right. So currently, what I wanted to say is most of the members from the Matt live project uh, and there are uh, over uh, where are they why am i not able to see all the members Matt live project is this the one this should be the one there are uh, over 70 participants in this group and you will be able to inter uh, all the mat or most members will automatically be moving into the new folder so let me open up the folder. Let me quickly talk about the document that I had and then we will get started. So UFT version 12, October 20th, right? So this was the one. So here was the approach document I had created in the previous session. And I spoke about how we will go about learning through the videos was the phase one, right? And then as part of phase two, I said, I will conduct the live training, which is starting today. Like, as I mentioned, the 4th November date, right? And then it will continue on till about 19th November. What we will do after that was a live project. So the same plan. The only thing is I will be doing more focus on this. So even if you have not spent too much time in phase one and learning through the videos, you are fine. I will try and cover most of what is important, but still there will be certain videos that you'll have to go back and view. All right. So the way we'll work as part of the live training is I will do two projects team. Project one will be a simple data driven framework. Right. This will take between four to six sessions in total. Then we will do a project two. Uh, and that will be a more complex keyword driven framework. This is all part of the live training. Remember this, this projects live training project. I'll mention it so that there's no confusion for any of you live training project one. Same thing live training project two. complex keyword driven framework. This will be about six to ten sessions. So instead of two weeks, this may become a three weeks program. And instead of 19th November, it may go on till about 26th November. So why did I make the change? Once again, the master of software testing and the mobile application testing live project just ended yesterday. Not the master of software testing, but the mobile application testing live project ended yesterday. Many of the members did not get significant chance to go through the phase one as I had suggested by learning through the videos. So I'm starting more basic level through a simple data driven framework and then we will go to more advanced project uh, through complex data driven framework. Okay. As part of the simple data driven framework, I will expose you to fundamentals of automation framework. What happened to my typing automation frameworks we will talk about what they are why are they important for each of us to learn okay how to design and build a ddf data driven framework from ground up we will talk about it as part of it we will talk about vb scripting all right 
variables we will talk about descriptive pro actually you know descriptive program will come into the next objects object repository uh, functions what else is there um, read and write from excel defect reporting and a few more fundamental but very essential uh, essential topics in uh, QTP slash DFT. Fair enough, team. This is what we will be doing. And we will take a sample application and build on it. So we will start with that first day today uh, after I quickly introduce. As part of the keyword driven framework, what we will do is we will talk a lot about descriptive programming. Sorry. Team, quick uh, check. Audio and video all clear for everyone? Why and when to use descriptive programming? Okay. Creating quick test function libraries. Um, we will talk about uh, error handling. We will talk about um, defect dashboards. More importantly, application independent um, automation framework. Then we will go into advantages and disadvantages of all frameworks, which framework to implement where. Now, I'm assuming, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that most of you are already about aware about IT learn about myself Karthik and how we conduct this training programs but just to let you know we don't do a topic based learning we do a project based learning so we always take a project and as we learn to implement or work on a project you will learn all the fundamental and essential parts okay now once we do that, you will be very well exposed to each of these concepts. And then we will go about implementing all of this. Then we will get into the live project and this will be very interesting as well. Uh, and I mentioned about this in the initial video. Fair enough. Any questions or any anything that is a question, uh, challenge right now? So the way the schedule is that we will do day one, day two. I'm just going to quickly mention it here. Day one and day two. All right on 4th and 5th november then we will have a break and primarily cont 4th 5th and then continue from the 10th break till 10th of november so tomorrow at the end of the day i will let you know what should you be doing for the next two three days so that we could go at a very good pace going forward all right so i'm hoping with this change of going a little bit more slow but starting with fundamentals and then going more complex is something that is hopefully helping a lot of our existing members all right great now let's uh, move forward team let's talk about the simple data driven framework so in this folder itself i'm going to create a new google doc and i'll talk and i'll rename this to be project one data driven framework okay so as part of this i did put a few points in the slide that i wanted you to look at what are the prerequisites what is an automation framework how to build a data driven framework from ground up how to become a master at building a data driven framework this is what we will get to so uh, let me put this into a regular size Arial. 10 10 too small 14 okay so prerequisites basically team as i said some a certain amount of uh, basic level understanding of qtp or uft is preferable and as a basic you know the ui and all that even if you're not sure that is no problem 
at this time is when you will download and install the trial version from hp.com and I'm going to show you how. So let's go quickly to hp.com right away so that you get an access to what we're trying to do there. So go to hp.com and you can look at this by searching out here by saying UFT or Unified Functional Testing Tool and uh, hit enter. You should hopefully get uh, the latest version out here. Free functional testing tools. Uh, look at this 30 day trial. Functional testing trials. Unified functional testing trial download now. Do you see this team? So here is the page that you all should be going to be able to download the latest trial version. You will have 30 days trial for it. Okay. Now I could install Windows on a separate partition or on a virtual machine on my Mac and do the same but what i will be doing is i will be installing it on a new windows machine that i have and i will be doing the remaining part of the training from there only today's session i'm doing it from the mac okay 30 days trial should be good enough however when you get to the live project this 30 days trial may expire and uh, by then you may have to find an alternate way to continue to use uh, uh, the trial or try and request for an extension of the trial we will guide you through our technical forum so do note that the it and tech forum is very popular it has got lot of information it has got plenty of uh, uh, reference that you can see in as part of members technical support all of what i'm showing team not the download of the free tool and all that is part of what you get as the welcome pack okay you have to be a premium member there's no question about that uh, to be able to continue with the remaining sessions so for premium member it's simple go to the pricing page or contact the sales team through phone email or chat i'll just copy this link and put it you have to be premium member through the pricing page uh, and then you will get something called as a welcome pack the welcome pack will have all the instructions of where is what okay faqs on installations and so on installation document and help okay and how to get tech support all right so when you have a technical question team let me get out of skype quickly for a second all right so these are the basic prerequisites earlier i had given more prerequisites i had asked you to literally go and watch a bunch of videos that should continue to happen but this is basically what it is for this project right now we will talk about what is an automation framework but team no theory the one thing that i really uh, insist very significantly is i don't focus on a theory basis at all so we will explore all of these as part of uh, uh, the practical concepts okay towards end of the data driven framework you will be able to answer this okay same thing of how to build a data driven framework okay you'll be able to answer this towards the end and how to become a master now this is a very important statement that i have mentioned here team what happens is that Many, many participants attend the IT Elance training every year through the videos, most of them through the uh, live webinars, also a lot of them. However, the confidence level dies down if they don't continue to practice or if they don't complete it. So I am going to talk about how you can master it and make sure that you retain that very important skill for a longer period of time. And how you can continue to practice so we will talk a lot about that uh, and we will explore a lot but all of these questions will get answered as we get into more advanced topics all right so that is what it is team so the first thing that we will need to do as part of building a data driven framework i will talk about automation plan to build a data driven framework so before i talk about 
building, I should talk about what a data-driven framework is, right? And as I said, remember theme, I don't want to talk about theory. Somewhere in the third or fourth session, you will get an idea of what we are trying to do. Right now, let me talk about a project. Okay, that starts always with an application under test first or AUT. Okay, we will talk about what this application does. Then we will talk about some kind of a test scenario or a test case. And I want you to help me identify what that application is and which one we will take. The sample or project project application under test is selected so that it gives us ample amount of uh, learning of QTP slash UFT. So the intent is not really to master an application, but to master QTP, to master VB scripting, to create a data driven framework for this project. So the reason we will try and choose a specific application is so that it will help you and it will help me to present it correctly and for you to really remember. That will be the way we will choose it. Then we will talk about what, how we go about building. So to choose a team, if you have remembered, we have done, I have done a lot of calculators, form based applications applications that require certain inputs from user and we get certain output i'm going to go back to the same thing we will take a new application altogether and we will interact with it so there are multiple things team things like mod gauge calculator that we could do i've done this so many amount of time so i really get bored out of it myself then then i started seeing what else can i do i can talk about insurance uh, mortgage insurance calculator or let's talk about insurance calculator or we could talk about a EMI calculator which is equal monthly installments or we could talk about a 401k 401k calculator loan calculator or 401k calculator team you help me there are how many over 125 participants currently in the session Help me and say which one should we take. I'll tell you why. For example, if I say 401k calculator and we go to anyone, let's see this if this is really apt, 401k calculator.org. What it does is it gives us the ability to be able to, give me a second, please. Waiting for the page to load, okay? What is this? This is an application. Every application needs to get tested this application may give us a certain amount of uh, focused area to test, a focused functionality to test. What could that be? A scenario where a user comes in, enters, let's say their annual salary, instead of 50,000, let's say 60,000, okay? And let's say their contribution to 401k instead of 10% is 6%, okay? 6%. And employer matches 50% of it. All right. Your current age, let's say, is more like 33. Your current 401k balance, let's keep it as is. And you have a retirement age. Let's assume that you want to retire early. Annual rate of return is 5%. Salary, you there's an increase 10% every year, which is very good. Let's try and get it down to more 5%, being more realistic about it. And employer max contribution is about 100%. At the end of this, the user gets a chance to click on calculate. And once the user clicks on calculate, basically, in fact, even before clicking on calculate, this is automatically getting updated as soon as the user starts entering information, right? So the balance of your 401k in 22 years. Why 22 years? That's the difference between your current age and your expected retirement age will be so and so. So what happened right now, team? Where is my paint brush? There is too big. 400, 600. No, the reverse. 600 by 400. Oops, oops. Okay, there you go. This is good. So, what did we just do, team? What we did is basically very simple. There is an application. That application does a specific process. All right. 
the user has a set of inputs okay inputs like age salary percentage of contribution and multiple other factors right based on what inputs the user is providing to the application the application gives certain output based on some calculation certain criteria certain logic that it applies and that is all some kind of a rules engine some kind of a decision making engine that it has got internally now as part of the application development when developers develop this application they put in all that information and make sure that the application works correctly as part of a test engineer you will try and replicate what the end user may do and see for various combinations of data how the same application is going to behave and what that output will be all right so here is a simple application that we could take as an example not with an intent that how complex is this application and so on more with an intent that can we try and learn a lot about qtp and lot about how the operations work for a data driven framework and master it using this as a base every time we need to change certain sets of inputs so that the engine behaves differently and we get a different output and that is basically your data driven framework concept team how we do it how we go about implementing it from ground about we will go about it so one option is we have a 401k calculator i wanted to give you this option so i'm still uh, going back to that so aut1 is a 401k calculator and i just took a random website in fact i didn't even visit this website so far the other option is we could talk about something else like retirement calculator that could be more uh, uh, specific like bank rate this one i did visit um, so here it's got more information for example your total after 35 years whatever all right uh, it's got a little bit more uh, data into it but essentially it's going to do the same thing all right so you could use this as well the first one was 401k calculator dot org is it yeah dot org team all of you with me i am letting you give help me choose because there are so many choices each choice has got its own pros pros and cons but more important what is what seems to be more exciting to each of you is what i wanted to know um uh, then there are mortgage calculators and various other things in fact as a project too we can do a mini project if the time permits for us we could do a mini this could be a project 3 we could do a live training mini project 2 again a data driven framework on a different application and this we can easily do it within 2 days all right this is easy for us to do it within 2 days um, then we will get into the more complex data driven framework uh, keyword driven framework okay so uh, what's your choice team let me look at the messages 401k email calculator emi car is fine so let's do this we will do uh 401k calculator here then we'll do a emi calculator for this okay okay i'll just write it emi calculator this is in fact one or two days max it'll take because now that you've mastered it's very easy to implement it somewhere else and here we'll just do a 401k calculator okay so how do we go about implementing now we will talk about those steps and for that what i will do is i'll take a simple excel sheet or in fact in this document itself the reason i'm putting everything in this uh, google drive is it's easy for me to share with each of you and then i will be able to get access to all of you you can directly take the documents from here so here i'm going to create a new file i'll talk about this google sheet spreadsheet here i'm going to talk about an automation plan team we'll quickly create a test automation plan high level very high level what's a high level what do you i mean by high level team high level is something that is not in detail it is uh, a, 
it is very very uh, talking briefly about what we want to do then we will get into the details through the implementation okay so then let's talk about it. the first one that we'll talk about is some kind of basic information info about the app aut and project scope we'll talk about what we will do here so what is the application under test let's talk about this 401k calculator.org i'm hoping you all okay because i've saw a few of the feedback and i've got the same so i'm taking 401k calculator.org instead of com yeah we're taking dot org itself itself so we're going to take this uh where is this automation plan there you go and this is 401k calculator.org okay now what is the domain or basic functionality of this let's talk about the domain what domain does this come under is this a health insurance health based domain medical domain manufacturing is it um, something to do with retail logistics it's specifically under finance industry it is a finance domain okay it can be sub quantified to something like retirement planning or investment planning and so on but it's more of a finance related why because if you take this project after you've complete this and put it on your resume saying that you've participated in such a training with this project you can talk about it and say this has been in the finance domain all right because it is end of the day the way we will go about you can literally take it put it as part of your training projects you don't have to mention that that's your work experience training experience and talk about all of this project because that will be great for your discussion all right so finance you can talk about finance industry or retirement services or benefits and so on okay now uh, what is the scope of testing that we are planning to do we are we are trying to do functional testing why functional testing we will also do something called as regression testing why regression what is regression why will we do regression and probably we are not focusing on uh, some of the things like what is out of scope let's talk about that also we're not doing any ui we're not doing any performance okay we're not doing any services um, testing etc okay what does it mean functional testing we will take a certain functionality of the application and try and implement that okay regression testing once we build this application uh, Oh, sorry automation test suite how do we go about reusing it over and over as the application goes through changes with minimal effect to the script that so that it can get reused effectively there is some kind of a overall criteria to making this automation work so that is your regression testing and we are leaving some other areas of out of scope and so on to it so team at this point let me make sure that i mention this that lot of participants do not come with a strong manual testing background what do i mean by saying that not all of you are already in manual testing you're probably looking at qtp or uft as a mode to get your first job in testing itself okay will you work on automation or not that's a different question but at least to enter into the testing industry qtp or uft will really help you give that edge over the competition you have it rightly placed on your resume with the right keywords with the right projects and you're able to confidently talk about it like the way i'm trying to teach you you will absolutely do great in it all right but do note that it is not mandatory for you to be thorough about all of these to understand qtp irrespective of your lack of knowledge on manual testing process you will still be able to understand and master qtp as a tool as a automation it will always help to have some basic understanding of manual testing process and that's good okay so this is the basic info about the aut so i'm going to merge this uh, two columns into one and give it some kind of a background it will start looking it will start to look much better for us as we develop this and i'll increase the size a little bit 12 okay and here we have these fields so now we have given some kind of a uh, high level agenda to what we're going to be doing let's also talk about briefly the project details okay why am i doing all of this thing it is very very important to 
do some kind of a basic preliminary approach to whatever we want to do before jumping into it because it will make us more well prepared and it will help us be planned more importantly it is easy for you to communicate when you get to your job you're not going to be working single handedly right there will be few other people in the same office or remotely who will be working with you you have to communicate lot of times you communicate through documents so if you want to explain to someone what you're doing you share such a document it is automatically talking a lot by itself you don't have to do any walk throughs about it right that is the intent why you go about with detailed documentation okay next one we'll talk about a little bit about project details project is let's say start date all right start date is 4th november and we plan to end this end date is let's say let's assume 31st 30th november i am not uh, saying that it will go that long but just in case and what kind of an automation are you doing uh, yes we are doing a data driven framework all right you can talk about then the team and uh, who's working on it i'll just say this is it elearn team you're all part of the it elearn team you're working on this project now and this sheet is primarily a first sheet and i'm going to rename this to our plan high level at a high level now i'm going to talk about a second sheet and this will be our ddf plan now at a high level we did an overall plan now we'll talk about a data driven framework plan this is all about how we go about building a data driven framework and our description uh, status everyone with me team is it i'm assuming it's all getting interesting for each of you and how we will slowly eventually develop a very solid framework through this process okay your feedbacks are important team once you start giving me the chat messages that it's going good i'm stuck i don't understand i can accordingly try and do things differently so the first thing as part of the data driven framework is application under test overview do you understand the application under the test under testing aut do you get the overall idea of it yes or no do you understand this team yes at a high level not depth i just gave you that quick rundown so you know what this application is beautiful now what is next we will talk about the second step being oops second step being the scope of test scenario rather do you know the test scenario itself what is it that the user is going to do what is it that you want to test are you do you know about it team i would say partially yes not too much so this is more like 50% why because tell me what all you could test here you could test ui you could test text titles page loading um any 404 error pages data uh, functionality links there is unlimited amount of things that you could do as part of testing what is our scope that we want to do that is it very specific so our scope is basically user so let's talk about that team now another sheet see how we are slowly going about building what we want to do rename this to test case or the test scenario whatever you want to uh, call it uh, step description the first step and this is just numeric numbers so nothing great about this and what we're going to be doing the description is the what is the first thing the user is going to do user visits application under test or let's give the url itself since we know it user visits 401k calculator.org second step user or let's not keep calling user every time enter what is the first field uh annual salary all right enter annual salary let's keep the first test case a little bit more uh easy so i'm going to insert one more column here actually you know what i'll do this later then it'll be easy enter annual salary simple one i'll create 
enter contribution, current age, retirement age, and click on calculate. That's it. Four steps. Why? It will be easy for you to do it. Then it will be much more easy for us to go about implementing it further um, and making it advanced. Enter salary, contribution to 401k, current age, retirement age. Click on calculate. Contribution to 401k, current age, retirement age. Enter contribution to 401k. Enter current age. Enter retirement age. Then click calculate. Right. This is what we want to test. Is it an end of a test case? The user has gone, he has visited, he has put in the details, and then he's clicking on calculate. Is it the end of it? If you notice, team, we have not yet touched QTP, and that is the idea. We don't want to touch QTP right away. Let's be a master at understanding what we are doing, and then we will go into QTP. That will be a cakewalk for you from there. No, why is it not the end of it? Every test needs to end with a verification. You go for a blood test for what? To see the results, to see how you have scored, how is your sugar level or how is your cholesterol or whatever you want to test, correct? You're going to test your car uh, for certain things like smog check and so on. End of the result, right? So you got to verify the result. What is it that you want to verify? Be very specific. You want to verify, let's say, is it calculating the right years and is it calculating the right balance? Two things, okay? Verify the correct year difference. Maybe very simple, but still we will verify. Verify the correct 401k balance. Do you and I know how to calculate a 401k balance right now? I have no idea, team. I don't know exactly how. I have no idea. But we will get to it when we want to. Fair enough? Now, this is this all that we could do with this calculator as a test? Or is there more we can do? So that's it. End of the test. We can do a lot more. What could that be? This is one test case. This manner, you could do so many of it. So I'll call this as a test case ID and say this is TC001. All right. And all of this, I'll put as TC001. Now I could do another test case and I'll call it as TC002. And almost the same thing, I may do more or less through it. Let's say I will not even enter the current age and contribution to 401k. We will take it as is, as it appears in the application when the user logs in. So now we have created quickly two test cases that we want to do. This way we could do combinations, multiple combinations of different sets of test cases that we may want to create. What we are doing is creating two base ones so that it's easy for us to create a framework and then we will go about expanding it further. All righty. Okay, great. So I'm assuming all is good. Any questions? Now, what else do we have to do? Go back to the data driven framework plan. So that is a test scenario. So identify the test cases. One or more. So I'll say test cases. Three. Identify the test data. What do I mean by the test data and how do we identify that? Every test case is built on specific steps like this that we're going to test. Let us talk about is there a test data, yes or no, for each of these. User visits the URL. Is this something that will change, yes or no? When I say data, that is something as a variable. Very simple example team, all right? Let's say that you have purchased a new phone, iPhone 6, for example, all right? 
Now you want to test and see how is it working. What will you do? You will test the video, you will test the audio, you will test to see if you are able to make the calls to different numbers, you will see if the Bluetooth is working with a couple of devices. So there are things that you will change and keep on doing, correct? Sometimes there are specific inputs that you give and that input can be different. Let's say you bought a car and you want to test the mileage of it. You're going on the surface, so you'll trip the meter and see how you're doing on a surface. Busy surface road, lot of signals, lots of brakes. Then you go on a freeway, regular freeway with regular traffic and see how it is. Then you go on a national uh, interstate and see at a higher speed without any brakes, without any traffic, how does it do, right? So you are testing something, different conditions, different speeds. So there is a variable. So test data is what is driving that test. You change the data, the test should change. Do you think the URL, here the URL is the only thing that you give as input, will change, yes or no? No, no. One person has said yes. The answer is yes, it will change. Why? Right now we are testing on 401k calculator.org. But if you're working in the testing team as part of this company, let us assume that you're working for this company, 401k calculator, you will not be testing on the production or the final one which is publicly available. You will have to test this before it gets into the public. So the public shouldn't be able to access. And there could be something like qa.401k calculator.org or there could be some other URL that is not publicly available. And you may keep on changing that URL each time because for each project, we may put it into different boxes and try and search through those servers, uh, test on those servers. So this can change and that is a driver. Is enter annual salary has a test data? Yes. Enter contribution to 401k? Yes. Current age? Yes. Retirement age? Yes. Click on calculate? No. It is always the same button. Verify the correct year difference. Do I have to use test data for it? No. Based on these inputs, what is it that it will calculate? That's it. Verify the correct 401k balance? No. There is no input of test data. There's only output of it. Okay. Now, let us talk about test data name. Or... Uh, yeah, test data name. Let's talk about the test data name. Here, I'll call this as a URL. Okay, I'll call this as an salary. Just a sh short description for what are we doing. Okay, I'll just call this as 401k. Easy, right? Just the name. Current age. So, I'll say C age. Retirement age. R age. Click on calculate. None of these are needed. So, I don't need one. Similarly here. Yes, yes, yes. And then no from here on. All of this, no. And then, same things I can copy. So the same test data we will use for multiple things. So we have to identify the test data, prepare the test data. What is preparing the test data team? So this I'll say is 75% done. Now you have identified where we need the test data. Now I have to say that first let's use this URL. Let's say annual sale is 40K and see how much it will happen. Let's say annual sale is $200,000, big salary. How will it happen? So different combinations of it. This we will come back later, nothing today or tomorrow, but we will prepare this. I'll just call this as, rename this to test data and we will put that information in here. So team, when you get access to this file, please do not delete anything. You can download it and view it as much as you want, but don't delete anything. So prepare the test data, 0% done. Then what do we do team? As part of the next steps, there are a few things which may be technical for us. I will still put it here so you know what we're going to be doing and then we'll go about. One is identify the objects in the application under test you know what i don't want okay let me write it so that you don't have to worry about it this is what we will learn okay six write the basic vb script for the test case right 
seven test the UFT code right eight create reusable functions to verify the result of the test so we have to test out something nine create reusable function to read test data from an external file and I'll tell you why we will do that 10 execute the test no let's do execute the test for sample test data 11 debug the entire code and make sure that make sure it is defect free because you're developing a code yourself you have to make sure everything is good uh, create diff okay error report uh, for test runs finally we will do execute the final test at the end every time I do a new project the number of steps will change team and it is not at all important why because the approach is the same the flow is the same eventually you'll see that we will add one or two more steps in between so that we are going in the right direction of it but this is what we will be doing so by the end of the six days hopefully six days plus or minus one or two here and there we will be able to complete all of these and as part of it you would have learned how to build a data driven framework a lot about qtp objects variables vb scripting object repository functions and a lot of those basic concepts then project two which is a mini project we will repeat everything very quickly we don't have to go through all this depth we will use the same template change the application change the functionality change a few things here and there and develop once more and then you will be uh, able to really understand what we're doing so team for today, this is what it is. Uh, we are almost towards the end of the session. Uh, we will continue tomorrow, same time. Please use the same link that you've used today to attend tomorrow. And I request you to make sure that you follow the instructions of what I'm asking you to do, what videos I've asked you to do, and go about in that direction. Stay with me, follow the instructions, do what I'm saying. For the next three weeks and you will become very good at this tool if you are interested you're serious about qtp and you think that will do good for you then you will definitely do very well in interviews you'll be very confident through the end of it okay now any questions that i can answer on what we did so far so the questions should be related to the topics that we have done so far in the sessions team because any questions that is forward is not relevant to the remaining audience and since there are over 130 participants in this uh, batch i request each of you to use the question and answer section to put your questions i will put it there which are the videos can you please tell again no i will not why because i have already told that in the approach document i have mentioned that here you have to go to that website and you will see the video where one second the previous video i've mentioned this so Sayali, you have to go there, please. So the third, there you go, the day two video. So I'm putting this link here for you, for all of you in chat. You can take this link and you'll see what videos I've asked to watch. Now, you don't have to watch all of them. If you can watch all of them, that's fine. Oops, what happened? Okay, there you go. Um, if you're not able to watch as many as you can, but primarily, let me actually go there and tell you. I said no, but I'm doing it either way team let the questions come because the session will end the minute i see that there are no more questions so please make sure that you start putting the questions while i'm trying to find an answer okay there are a lot of questions i think it will take a long time but let me answer them so 11.5 training videos one two three four five six i think the first six chapters more than enough team in this 
URL, the first six, six chapters is more than enough. All of these are small videos. These are not big videos. 48 minutes in total, 43 minutes, one and a half hour, one and a half hour, two hours, three hours. So total about seven, eight hours. How to watch the videos also I've mentioned. Watch it like a movie. Don't pause. Do not rewind. Do not forward. Don't do anything. Let it keep playing. Keep a book on the side and keep taking notes. Why? What happens if you don't understand anything? No problem. I'll keep repeating it as we do this project. So then it will become easy for you to recollect. But once you stop pausing, try and practice on it while you're watching it, you'll never finish it. So do not practice, do not pause, do not rewind. Just play it as movies, as a movie, end to end. When we finish it, when we come through, when we continue through this project, it'll be easy for you to understand. All right. All right, next question. Hi, Karthik. Does a uh, collection of test scripts, object repository test data is known as framework? No, it is not at all called as framework. Gopal, framework is all about a structure of doing things. The reason I'm not giving a definition to you right now is because once we develop one framework, a data-driven framework that we're doing right now, it will be very easy for me to explain what a framework is. Okay, It is basically like a skeleton. It is like the creating the external, uh, when you're building a building, you start with building how the pillars will come, where will it come and so on. Then you can go about saying how the room should come, what is the interiors, how the material should be and all that. But then that's a standard thing that you can keep on doing over and over for different projects. So at the end of the session, you'll understand very clearly what a framework is. If any of you are currently in a hurry to learn a lot okay you can go ahead and start looking at some more videos like introduction to automation framework and data driven framework and so on those will explain all of these things again at in an advanced level to you but you don't really need to go there we will cover it as part of this uh, but these tutorials are wonderful you will love them if you start watching it at this level i can't gauge difference between test uft code and execute the test for sample test data a good question let me see what that is meant so let's go back to the plan execute the test for sample test data and execute test the uft code okay so what is happening yeah you're right i intend to try and execute the code at multiple places you write a little bit then you execute it so instead of saying test the uft code i'll call it as debug the uft code you will try to make sure that there's no errors and then you will have to continue to repeat the same process over and over and over again so we have done certain things here i want to debug then we will do a couple of more things then we will again do a debug then we will finally say that okay it's good to run that's the only idea about it meant. i'm just putting it there but debug we will do many many more times multiple times all through shall i get the today's session slide yes so there's no slide you'll get the video the video will automatically go back onto this page the first events hp uft 12 qtp it'll go there uh hi karthik are you going to save all the notes docs on a drive for us to refer yes i will if so where i can access this video and the excel file so this files you will get access to it as a google drive so as the sessions are happening you're able to download at a later point all these files the scripts and all that i will compress them into zip and attach them with the videos in the it elan website the videos will be on our website so you can go back uh, in a few hours from now this video should be available uh, in this page that i've given as the link i'm going to put that link again for you guys in the chat you're seeing the links i'm putting in the chat that's the link you can take when are you going to give access to the google drive uh, it, it should start to happen i will instruct manoj to do it it will happen very soon are you going to go over hybrid framework yes so sonal either i am going to do it as part of project three or you are going to do it as part of live project all right either of them how can i access this document i've answered will you be showing how to write the test cases absolutely i've already started writing test cases we will go about expanding on them okay so we have written some basic test case now we'll do a lot more about it as we go along can you please share us the link for the files yes the same answer same answer 
any question that is uh, repeating i'm uh, kind of ignoring team all the questions you're putting it in the questions and answer section as part of the go to webinar could you tell me once again about functional integration testing deepa not really very relevant for the session however very simple functional testing is you want to test to see if something is functioning right functioning is basically what is supposed to be happening to that application is it doing correctly or not okay for example you have a car okay is it driving fine all right let's say you're driving to see is it smooth and all that that is what is functional testing okay and it is going through the curves nicely it is handling well uh, it is braking fine and so on okay let us say tomorrow you change the tires and you made some modification to the car you will repeat the same functional test again with this new changes and that is your regression testing all right so that is the primary difference uh, between functional and regression testing what exactly framework means so karthik i have answered that what about qtp 10 how about qtp 10 so all the videos that i have start with qtp 10 and they continue to go through qtp uh, remaining versions of it so 11 11.5 and right now 12 so we are adding 12 into the catalog of video library that we already have uh second test in your google sheet there is no 401k right you're right so enter annual salary enter retirement age just r age you're right so and then no uh data for click calculate and no data for verify the correct here you're right thank you sofia i appreciate it i download qtp from the link provided by it learn support fair enough very good uh what we are doing in qt in uft 12 you can do exactly the same things very very minimal changes are even needed for you to replicate the same things within qtp 10 so if you have qtp 10 stick with it absolutely fine no problem with it but when i try to record recording doesn't work so deepthi those recording doesn't work something doesn't happen and all that please just consult with the technical help desk use the technical forum you should get an answer there all right just follow the guidelines it should be fine we will also relook at it how it should happen search the technical forum team this is what i really sometimes get a little annoyed with is people go in they don't even take that little effort take a little effort qtp automation I go here there are hundreds and hundreds of topics here just search and say recording issue all right or just a recording and see there will be so many questions already here qtp is recognizing only one object that is as win object how to write vb script to generate customized reports ie11 is crashing when record and play qtp record and run question so there is already so much of information that has happened 7 days ago to um, almost a year plus ago and so on additionally team there are over close to 6000 members in it right now and this was just started about an year and a half or so back this technical forum so there are lot thousands of members there you can interact with all of them through it api and gui testing covered no i am not covering as part of this current flow of sessions what stage do we insert checkpoints uh, checkpoints is very basic it is something that you can completely ignore however all the tutorials that are there will point to checkpoints we will do checkpoints in a different way there is an inbuilt tool of qtp that does checkpoint we will do the same checkpoints using vb scripting using the coding why because if you go into an interview and say i'm good at record and run if you say i'm good at actions and i'm good at checkpoints you will not get a job i'm being a little um, extreme in the comment but that is some kind of a fact if you go in and say i'm very good at identifying objects to work with descriptive programming with vb scripting doing lot of custom verification and validation and creating automation framework that is what will be a core strength team okay and this program is all about in that direction so actions you have tutorials checkpoints i have tutorials i have tutorials on all of this no problem about it but don't focus too much on it focus more on scripting descriptive programming frameworks and so on all right team last few questions and then i'm going to end because i know there are a lot of people here 
um, but I want to make sure that you have your questions. And why we need to write code instead? We cannot use directly tool record in that. Girish, thank you so much for asking that question. Why are we writing the code? Why are we not recording it? You will know once I finish writing the code. I'll tell you exactly why. And if you look at my videos, I don't focus at all on record and run. Very simple. There is no power in it. There is no control in it. There is. It is like, why are you driving? Why are you not letting your car drive all the way to your work? There are tools. There are apps. There are some experiments someone is doing somewhere. Why not? Because you're not able to control it. You're not able to really make it go in the way you want it to. All right. So let's say you're a sports driver. You're absolutely fanatic about speed. Why are you using stick shift? Why are you not using manual? Because you don't have what you need to race. So for you to be an awesome automation engineer, you have to go beyond record and then. That is why you need to do uh, scripting. Credential for Google Drive, Pankaj. Team, all premium members will get access to it before this weekend. All right. So don't worry about it. all premium members for the ongoing QTP training you will get access to it um so that i am doing do we need gmail id for accessing i think you need a gmail id for accessing if you don't have a gmail id don't worry at the end of every project i will zip the files into one qtp and all these documents into one file and put it along with the videos so then you can download it automatically that's just me thinking my mind when it thinks i do that sound deep uh all right great so team i've almost come to the end of the session and the questions there is other questions like qtp 10 and qtp 12 differences we will explore that towards the end of the training um once you know and see qtp 12 then it will be easy for you to know what it is otherwise it's a very theoretical subject all right so let's explore everything practically let's do a lot of coding let's do a lot of exciting project works that you can take learn master implement or crack interviews that's the whole game plan all right thank you so much all for attending especially people in the east coast people in uk australia india wherever you're from and west coast across the us thank you so much for attending appreciate all your time uh, let's meet same time tomorrow let's continue our project tomorrow we will start working on our qtp tool because we need to get into the next step as part of a plan okay um, any of you have questions regarding uh, the sales and all that please don't contact me reach out to the team directly all the questions will get answered and uh, we'll see you back tomorrow then thank you so much have a great day bye thank you all